making art, I believe, is therapeutic. It um, puts one into a creative space, which is typically an internal space. So we enter a quiet, introverted place. And the way the art therapy component enters is that the client is invited into that space, invited into what we call a playful, creative space, often drawing upon the unconscious what we often say is the dream time. So where do the images come from in the art therapy process? Where do they come from? How do they just pop up? The belief is, and I think the studies prove, that these images come from deep within. And Jung has so much to say about image and symbol and one of his uh, most stunning contributions, I believe, is to encourage a symbolic attitude. Someone could find themselves in a life situation where they felt they wanted to have therapy or, or analysis and maybe this is a person who has already had verbal therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, family systems, all sorts of approaches, right? And while they've had an opportunity to take their issue to the therapist, they come away feeling as if they got stuck in their intellectualizations, that they just kept going to their head, so to speak, and didn't really get to the heartfelt issue, uh, the burden that they were carrying. And maybe they've heard about art therapy or read something about it, and there they would learn that um, art therapy uses fundamental art techniques to help the client gain access to deeply seated unconscious material, very much like the work with dreams that Jung talks about so much. So art therapy is a way in, a way in to the dream time. So there's a motivation in a prospective client to be able to access the, the feelings, the issues that are really at the heart of their discomfort. And they're courageous enough to interview a Jungian art therapist and to often say, I've had no experience with art. Um, I can't draw a straight line. And, and then they're invited into this playful approach with the material. And some of the techniques that we use are uh, techniques such as the scribble drawing, clay scribble, tissue paper collage, which are revelatory and often transformational. And, and the client is guided into that process. 
The other aspect of that that's very important is that the art therapist analyst serves as the guide, as the witness to the process. And I, I could go on for hours talking about how important that is and what it's like, especially if this is an adult seeking Jungian art therapy, uh, what it's like to draw in the presence of another. I mean, when do we have an opportunity to do something like that? Probably not since childhood. And there are dynamics that um, arise between analyst and client from being the one to be, uh, to being in the position of being observed. It replicates often the parent, early parent-child relationship. And the analyst is able to hold the client symbolically in the eyes, um, the caring eyes of the other. Now, you may be interested to know, uh, in, in my opinion, I think that Carl Jung could be known as the father of art therapy, the father of the expressive arts therapies, uh, dance, movement, music, art. And he, um, in his own exploration of, the, of his self, often got stuck, like, like all of us do. And when he would get stuck writing an idea, he would spontaneously reach for his drawing materials. And it was in that way that he discovered that the art replicates entering into the dream time. And, and he talked about this as the rite d'entrée. There are some wonderful passages in Memories, Dreams, Reflections, where he explains how, as a, a middle-aged man, he remembered a childhood game of playing with stones by the lakeside. And between clients, between patients, he went out to the lake and gathered his stones and found himself building villages and churches and markets. He became so immersed in his game, what he called his game, that, that he began to worry and feared that people would wonder about his sanity. And one day he heard the question, Jung, what are you about? And that question in my relationship with Jung, art therapy analysis is a cornerstone, a keystone, really, because the answer that came to him was uh, that he was on the path to discovering his own myth, and that myth was the self. And he clearly states that from then on, whenever he came up against a stone wall or got stuck with his work, he took up his art materials. And many of you seen, have seen the images in the Red Book and in so many of the collected works where he literally drew himself out of being stuck. And, and he said that those times uh, engaged with the arts and connected to his inner life were the most important parts of his life.
so I have a special relationship, really, with, with that simple question, what are you about? And found that I, I was searching myself and felt up against the wall in seeking a topic for my thesis, for my graduate training, my analytic training. And I had a dream where a silver-haired man was in the middle of a room and I was surrounded with miniatures for sand tray work. And in a kind of resonating voice, he said to me, Sandy, what are you about? And at that moment, I was holding some of the miniatures and they, as I interpreted them and came to understand their symbolism, became the thread, really, for my thesis. Um, and, and this is the kind of transformational work that very often happens for clients using art therapy, that uh, something that you're really not aware of can surface through engagement with the arts. And I'm sure that my clients and my workshop um, attendees get tired of hearing me use that question, what are you about? It's open-ended, and to me, it goes right to the core. You may wonder what is the optimal age for engaging with art therapy. And my personal experience with that is that I've worked with children from the age of three. And one of my senior, senior clients was a dear woman who passed away a couple of years ago at the age of 104. And she was still engaged with, with the art therapy, still ready to try something new. It, it was quite an amazing relationship. I told her at one point that I felt as if she had become my teacher. And of course, Jung talked all the time about the relationship of analyst and client. And if, he said, both aren't affected, then the work is of no value. So art therapy, Jungian art therapy, can be found with people of all ages. Uh, in my private practice, per se, at this point in time, I would say most of my clients are between the ages of Mm, late 20s, late 20s to mid 70s, um, a signal of, of our changing times. And I've had the opportunity, too, to work with many, many art therapists in training over the past years. It's, uh, the students are urged to have their own experience in art therapy just as in the analytic training, students must be in their own analysis throughout the training. So I've been talking about um, the magic, really, of Jungian art therapy. And I've been putting that in the framework of working with an analyst. But I'd, I'd like you to know that if you feel curious, curiosity is really important, if you feel curious about wh what is this thing and what is the experience of it, there are a number of ways that you can begin to explore the possibilities. There are classes at the Jung Society here in Washington, in Philadelphia. There are workshops that one can attend, 
locally and elsewhere. And there are things that you can do at home. Um, I certainly suggest journal, journal writing with the addition of simple drawings, collaging, doing vision boards. Uh, there's no question in my mind that it's helpful to have a guide slash analyst, therapist, but there are ways to begin the process yourself, to begin to cultivate what Jung called a symbolic attitude, which um, is so significant for the work of individuation, for discovering who you are, who you uniquely are, and to discover images and symbols that pinpoint that is truly a gift to yourself. Thank you.